Well, hello, I'm Kaz and welcome back to the free to play review. So today's topic is a continuation from yesterday with the Mithrala focused events, and that is the path of the serpent. If you are pursuing the serpent Titan event, then you have to participate in this path to some extent in order to get some of the Titan event points. Because recall, if you watched, if you didn't watch yesterday's video, you can only skip 250 points and there is a whopping 300 points up for grabs here across the four nodes that you can get from this event. So at the bare minimum, you'd have to get at least one of the 50 point nodes, but then that would mean that you're strapped in to do every single other event featuring Titan event points. Granted, that is only if you're going all the way out to milestone five. If you're doing milestone four, you can skip a lot more things. There's a lot more flexibility, but we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here. So this hero's path is a combination of dungeon divers and a summon rush. And you might've noticed, of course, that the portal is a light, meaning that there is a progressive chance going on right now and through the rest of the weekend. So this is taking the place of whatever normal summon rush we would have had, but there is some incentive to pull some shards alongside of the horrendous event that is Dungeon Divers. So if you were just interested in the overall rewards, obviously we talked about the 300 Titan points up for grabs, which is fairly juicy, but we do also have Legendary Tome here on the left, Legendary Tome on the right, and a Turtle Soul Stone here on the right, and then two Mythical Tomes here in the center. So if we take a quick look at the info tab here, you can see all of the amounts of points uh, for the Dungeon Divers. Again, that's mostly negligible. Like you'll get some credit because there are some events to do over the next few days, and we'll talk about that when we get to what I plan to do over the next few days. But the thing I want to highlight here is the amount of points you can get for pulling shards. Obviously, Sacreds are the most, most powerful at 4,500. Primals are pretty decent at 1,800. However, I would recommend holding on to Primals for a true 2x on Mythicals and Legendaries and Epics. Void Shards can be pretty powerful, 750 a pop, and that's more of when you have obviously an abundance of Void Shards, but you're probably far from Mercy, and you just want to pull some just to get closer to Mercy because there's not a 2x, or you are close to Mercy and the progressive chances are tempting for you unless you want to uh, just get a little bit closer to get that legendary you might be hoping for. Ancient shards are pretty weak at 300 a pop, but nonetheless, they can fill some gaps if you're just trying to close towards some certain reward or milestone. And don't forget, can't really see it behind me there. There we go. Three three points per mystery shard. So every single 10 pop is 30 points. So if you open 30 mystery shards, you feed all the food with the instant rank up thing, that's 90 points. So you can get close to 100 points in a matter of seconds. So just keep that in mind. If you're really close to something, you don't want to spend some of the bigger shards. You don't want to spend energy on the dungeons. Do not forget about the power of mystery shards when it comes to these summon rush aspects of heroes paths so for this iteration of the heroes path i have identified four paths that i think most people want, might be enticed to take and honestly there's only a couple that are probably worth even doing from the get-go but we'll talk about that when we get to the breakdown later on in the spreadsheet but the first path of course the most uh, enticing i would say in this case it would be the titan event points so getting all 300 of the points basically you come down the left and the right hand side independently and then you get the 50 node the 100 node the 50 node 100 node so there you go, 300 points. That's a grand total of 41,000 points overall. If you were not keen on getting that at all and you just wanted to walk away with the Legendary Tome at a really affordable rate, then just coming down the left-hand side or the directly the right-hand side, that would be the cheapest, and you know, 10,000 points down here. That's only 27,000 points, which again, we'll get to the spreadsheet and talk about how many sacreds that is equivalent to, but it is not a bad deal if that is all you're looking for. And of course, you'll end up getting 100 points, uh, Titan points along the way anyway, so that's kind of a side benefit if you're just going for a Legendary Tome. If you wanted to go for the Eternal Soul Stone, you kind of mimic what you're doing for the Legendary Tome, except you diverge right here at the Eternal Soul Coins, and you go there, 30,000 points, and that's a grand total of 53 thousand points just to get the eternal soul stone that is quite expensive but i am certain there are a lot of people pulling a lot of shards that will be able to get all the way out there but uh, that might not be for you and the most expensive one and the one that i think is not actually worth it in this iteration of a hero's path sometimes it is sometimes it's not in this case i think it's not but if you wanted to get one of the mythical tomes here in the center you do need both of the keys which means you have to come down the left hand and the right hand side just above the legendary tome granted this will give you 200 titan event points along the way if you do it and so that could be advantageous depending on your situation but you have to come all the way down left hand right hand side get one of the, uh, get both of the keys and then you also have to come down the center open this path to the uh, 2000 points here 20,000 there and that's a grand total of 63,000 points so it's pretty pricey when it comes to uh pulling shards and the other only event being dungeon divers which will not grant you that many points unless you dump 
thousands and thousands of energy, which most people aren't going to be able to do. So let's hop over to the spreadsheet really quickly and take a look at this in a little bit more detail. So we have the four paths that I specified here, the Titan path, the legendary tome path, the eternal soul stone path, and the mythical tome path. And then if you wanted to summarize those in terms purely of shards, this is what you need to know. So when I was talking about the legendary tome being a good deal, typically speaking, six to eight sacreds on like two X sacreds during a chant chase is enough to get you 3000 points, depending on RNG, of course. Um, and, and so six sacreds guaranteeing yourself one legendary tome is not a bad deal. That's on par with a two X sacred champ chase, which is champ chase, which is the only other time I would recommend pulling sacreds outside of a summon rush for a fusion. If you wanted to get all the Titan event points just with sacred shards, it'd be around 10, 12 for the eternal soul stone and then 14 for the mythical tome. So it's kind of up to you to choose which one is the best for your particular situation. In my case, I'm only focused on getting the Titan event points. Otherwise, I'd probably just be skipping this event because I would have no incentive to pull shards and I would just get whatever points I get from dungeon divers along the way. But uh, in my case, my plan is to try and reduce this cost from 10 sacreds down to like six or seven just by spending the next four days doing the Ice Golem turn attack tournament for also that I also need to do to get Titan event points as well as the champion training tournament to also get some Titan event points. Points. And so hopefully combining those efforts over the next four days is going to give me some credit of Dungeon Divers, and then I could bring this down to six or seven. So I'm going to wait until Sunday, obviously the last day possible to pull the Sacred Charge just to kind of round out wherever we are in terms of points on the path. If you were curious, we do have the Dungeon Divers section over here on the left hand side. As you can see that, you know, if you're running the campaign stage 12, three on Brutal, you'll get an average of 10 coins per run. And then if you're running, you know, any of these particular dungeons, you kind of pick whichever one you guys are focused focused on, you can get anywhere from 30 to about 35 uh, coins per run. So yeah, my recommendation here is if you're not focused on the Titan event, then I think it's a fairly accessible or fairly cheap legendary tome up for grabs just for the cost of six sacreds. Obviously, I know for a lot of people, if you're early on in your mid game, six sacreds is ridiculously expensive outside of a fusion. So I understand that. But if you're more in the end game, you're more in the late game, or you just have a stockpile of shards, it's not a bad investment just to return, uh, just to get the return of a legendary tome to use on your champions to develop them. But you know, if you're more or towards the end game as well, I do recommend going for all of the Titan event points because we don't exactly know what the entire schedule is um, for all of the Titan event events. And so banking them up front is just the best way to go to protect yourself for any surprises that come later on. And since I mentioned it, I might as well share what the progressive chance champions are going to be in case you were thinking about pulling your shards over the course of the next four days. So for the voids, you have one of the, uh, I guess the theme was a uh, continuous heal champions. So Yurigrim, pretty nice. Demitha, if you're looking to get her, to open up, uh, you know, Demon Lord, Clan of Ultra Nightmare. That's not a bad investment in order just to, you know, hopefully you get her fairly quickly and it's not too expensive. But uh, yeah, you have a couple of Void Legendaries. I don't think they're amazing. I think Yin Sensa is her name, something like that, is pretty decent for Hydra. Pretty cool with the uh, Poison Cloud buff on a champion instead. Um, and so that's an interesting interaction with Hydra. So she can definitely do some work there. I think like a, a, a decreased defense and weaken that can't be prevented by block debuffs is kind of unique as well on our kit. But uh, for the generic shards or every other non-void shard, we have a bunch of um, you know continuous heal champions. So we have uh, Grand Oak Padre, Calvlax, which is kind of weird that they can include him in this group. But technically speaking, he does get continuous heals if you try to poison him. That's the uh, part of his passive. Bad Alcazar, you can see he's my choice there. Ultimate Death Knight, very annoying, but you know, he does have continuous heals. Wither the Crown, one of the best healers in the game, aside from like Marichka, of course. Um, Ilfrig is a uh, Lady Mikage epic, so that's why I chose him on my account, as is Delaja. She's also Lady Mikage epic, so those are good opportunities to get those epics just because of boosted odds. Um, Rector Drath, one of the best Hydra champions in the game, so you know she's very, very desirable. So I would honestly want to empower mine even more. So if we happen to get Ulfrig uh, pretty soon, then I'd probably switch her, uh, switch him out for Rector and hope that I can get a duplicate of her. So yeah, these are my choices for the Progressive Chance event. We can dive into this a little deeper on Sunday when we talk about uh, pulling some shards. All right, so it's going to do it for the free-to-play review of the Path of the Serpent. Let me know in the comment section down below which reward or rewards is most enticing for you guys guys in this iteration of the hero's path and if you wanted to take another look at that spreadsheet it will be linked in the description box down below so feel free to go over there as always if you did find this video helpful let me sure to hit that like button down below it really does help out the channel and also feel free to subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content thanks for watching and have a good one